received an email last week from one of you guys, one of my YouTube subscribers, um, asking me two things. One is what type of legal entity you should have when you're buying a business and when should that entity be ready? So in today's video, we're going to dive into that and talk about that in a little more. Let's get to it. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am your host, Leo Landaverde, business broker and commercial lender, helping you buy and scale a profitable business. If you are a small business owner looking to increase your wealth by buying a profitable business, or if you're a W2 employee looking to leave the rat race behind by buying a profitable business, then you are in the right place. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell. You'll be notified every Thursday when a new video comes out. Let's get into it. First, number one, let's talk about the when. So when is the ideal time to have your legal entity set up ready to capture the assets of whatever business you're purchasing? Well, uh, the latest time that you can actually have it ready to go is at the beginning of escrow. So once you have your letter of intent signed both ways and you're ready to open escrow, you should ideally have your legal entity ready to go. And Possibly, if it is not ready for escrow, you can have it ready by the during the due diligence phase. Uh, but what I like is if you already made up your mind, even before you started looking for a business uh, in the internet or by whatever means necessary, you need to have that legal entity seasoned and ready to go. So you can do that anytime. Um, you can have it ready um, six, whenever you made that decision that, yeah, you know, I want to buy a business and I'm going to do an asset purchase to buy purchase the assets of a business that I'm buying and I'm going to put them on a legal entity, then the sooner you have it ready, the better. You don't want to really, I don't like dealing in uh, having to worry about that during the diligence or an escrow because that's another thing for you to worry about. We have enough things to worry about uh, during the transactional period in escrow that that should not be one of them. So, um, okay, so, but the, the important thing is once you have your legal entity ready, you're going to have your, you know, your articles of organization, uh, if, it is, uh, if it is an LLC or your articles of incorporation, if it is an S Corp or a C Corp, you're going to have your um, operating agreement. You're going to have your state filings. You're probably have, going to have an EDD number if you're in California. Uh, if you're in the States, that allows you to have your payroll set up. You're going to have your federal EIN number from the IRS. You're going to have all this uh, you know, depending on who you go with, you can have it all in a corporate binder and I certainly encourage you to keep everything in one place, uh, the seal and everything under one roof. So you'll know because you're going to need those documents over and over. Once you have that, you're not done. You need to take that information and go to, the, to your bank and open up a checking account either under the legal entity name or if you're going to use a DBA, a, DBA a, do, a fictitious business name or a doing business as, then that needs to be filed first with your local city or county, then attached to your legal entity, and then you can open up a bank account. Now, if you're looking to buy a business is, and say that this is an LLC or an S-Corp, all you have to do is you have to have you, the corp, you take your corporate binder when you meet with your business banker, and that'll kind of take it from there. All right, so that as to the when. Now, the what. What type of legal entity is best? Well, there's three possible uh, buckets or categories, uh, the types that you can actually go into. Um, you can have an LLC, uh, which is very much favored uh, for, you know, real, where there's, you know, people that are real estate investors have the real estate assets in an LLC. It works very well for a business if you want to have the business asset into it. Now, the problem with an LLC is that if you want to pay yourself a salary, you can't through an LLC, you're going to have to have the, the treatment of, of an S Corp on the back end. So you are in legal, a limited liability company on the front end, uh, say your company name, comma, LLC, and you're going to have to have an S Corp treatment, and that is an election that is done. So the first, the first road is, for instance, one of my businesses is an LLC with S Corp treatment, so it allows me and anybody that works for me, especially, especially the officers or the members, to have salaries. Okay. Do you need help in buying a business? I know how hard that can be, but you're not alone. I would love to help you and guide you. 
please connect with me, reach out to me. You can email me. The email address will be down below in the description section of this video, or you can just drop me a comment below and I'll get back to you right away and we'll look for a time to connect. I want to help you in your journey. So if you're not going to be an LLC, the next best thing is to be an S Corp. Now, by default, all corporations are C corporations, uh, but a small corporation is a, is a, it's a pass-through entity, which means that the net income of the legal entity flows through your personal tax returns in 1040 by the way of K-1s. So it is the most efficacious, it's the, it's the quickest, but you know it doesn't it has drawbacks, meaning that uh, there it, although there is marginal tax on the um, on the on the on the legal entity itself, you're gonna have your marginal tax associated with your 1040, whatever state you're at. Now at the federal, you know, the, the marginal tax at the federal rate is gonna be closer to 39%, 39.6. That is the highest tax you're gonna pay. Now, a drawback of, a, of an S Corp or an LLC is that it flows through your the legal entity into your personal tax returns. Now, I'm not gonna I'm not a, a CPA, nor am I gonna give you any tax advice in this video. I strongly suggest that you talk to your local CPA, the person that actually helps you with your tax, the tax uh, the preparation of your tax returns to handle that. But I'm just talking about broad strokes here. The other type, so, so far we talked about an LLC, we talked about an S Corp uh, or a subchapter S Corporation, and last but not least, you're going to have your C Corporations. As I said before, a C corporation, it, all corporations are by default C corporation. A C corporation is an entity that pays its own taxes, which means that if you pay your own taxes, you're not really subject to the K-1 provisions of the S corp and the LLC in which you have to, your, 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 your year end, the, the end of your tax year, it has to be at 1231 if you're going to have a small corporation or an LLC because the K-1 is what flows into your tax returns, which means that you have to have your fiscal year in at 1231. When you have a C corporation, you can do what you can choose whatever fiscal year end you want. You could be March 31st. You could be June 30th. You could be uh, September 30th. You could be October 31st or you could be December 31st. Now, here's the thing. If you're looking for businesses and to buy and the net, the EBITDA, it's higher than half a million dollars, I would strongly suggest that you consider probably a C corporation. Um, if it is less than half a million in EBITDA, you're probably looking at a small corporation. Now, again, you need to discuss that with your tax preparer. Um, the, one of the advantages of having a C corporation as your legal entity is that your marginal tax rate for the corporations is 20, 20 to 22%. So uh, you, the corporation pays its, its corporate taxes, and but you as a shareholder, whenever you draw money out of the legal entity via shareholder distributions, then you're going to be taxed there. So you're going to be taxed through your payroll tax wage. You know, when you, whenever you have your wages, you're going to be taxed, a payroll tax, right? And then you're going to pay a payroll, a tax on distribution. So you're going to have two types of tax. It may be better than your marginal tax if it flows through a K-1. So there is when and the what. So please, if you have questions, keep sending it to me because I actually think about doing videos around those questions and this is one of those. So thank you so much for watching my video. At the time, I'm giving away my cash flow calculator, a tool that is becoming increasingly useful for those of you who are looking to buy a business because what it allows you to do is allow you to look at the post cash flow after including debt on buying a business, which is a real cool tool. I talk about it in a lot of my videos. So I think it's, it's my gift to you. All you have to do is click on the link below. It's yours to have. Enjoy it.